Hey dudes, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, the objective is for you to be able to explain what momentum is, and to be able to solve calculations to determine the momentum of an object. Let's get into it. Momentum is simply the product of the mass and the velocity of an object. So check this out, guys. The two things you need to know in order to solve for momentum are the mass and the velocity of the object. Now, the momentum is represented by a little lowercase p. So that guy right there is my momentum. Now, momentum equals the mass of an object multiplied by its velocity. So the two things required for an object to have momentum is that, one, it must be be an object that has mass. So all objects have mass, so therefore they're all candidates to have momentum. But the second thing they all must need to have momentum is a velocity. Now not all objects have that. Now velocity simply means the object must be in motion. So which objects have momentum? All those objects that have both mass, which they do, and velocity. So objects at rest do not have momentum. All other objects do. Momentum is a vector quantity. That means we're going to specify a magnitude for the momentum, a number for it, and we're also going to give it a direction. And just so you know, it's kind of easy. Whatever direction the velocity is going in, up, down, left, right, positive, negative, the momentum is going to match that direction as well. So please make sure you tag your answers with a magnitude as well as a direction. All right, dudes. So the goal on this slide is for you to determine which object has more momentum. So let's give the, uh, the classifications of the objects here. We have a large object. I'm just going to represent it. And I'm going to tell you that object has a mass of 100 kilograms, so definitely a candidate to have momentum. And it's moving, let's say it's moving in the rightward or eastward direction at 10 meters per second. So it has a mass and it has a velocity. Now my smaller object over here, it's going to have a mass of 10 kilograms, and it's moving, though, at a much faster velocity, 100 meters per second. So which object would have a greater momentum? And you have to actually stop and think about this. It's possible for small objects to have greater momentum than large objects, meaning that smaller object will be more difficult to stop than the large object. So let's crunch the numbers. That's the only way we're going to find out. So a second ago, we defined momentum, a represented as the Ella. Uh, <laughs> a second ago, we represented momentum with the letter P. Now, P is going to be equal to the mass times the velocity. So P is going to be equal to 100 kilograms times 10 meters per second and my momentum is going to be 1000 kilograms times meters per second and that's exactly how we express that so you have one momentum at 1000 kilograms times meters per second and the second momentum of the smaller object p equals m times v now p equals my mass of 10 kilograms times my velocity of 100 meters per second. Whoa, what's happening here? We end up having a momentum that is identical to the large object. So what you're seeing here is that a large object can have the exact same momentum as a small object. And in fact, if that small object was going a little faster than 100 meters per second, it would be harder to stop than the large object because it had more momentum. That's awesome because sometimes in football there's large players that collide with small players, but the small players are moving crazy and wicked fast, so therefore they can take down the larger opponent. It's really, really cool stuff when you start crunching the numbers in momentum. Even those little tiny electrons, they have momentum. 
They just have a very small amount of momentum because although they're moving fast, their mass is so small relative to their velocity. All right, dudes, this is the last uh, slide of your lesson here. The two goals that I had for you, my two objectives, were you to be able to explain what momentum is. And we kind of covered that already. It's the product. It's the product, guys, multiplication of mass and velocity. And I also wanted you to be able to calculate out the momentum of an object. Now, you know that an object needs to have mass and velocity in order to have momentum. And these three examples that I'm showing you have mass and velocity. And I want you to determine which one has the most momentum. And the first thing I want you to look at here, just the first thing, I want you to see that my example number two is the most massive object. It's 1,000 kilograms. It's a lot compared to the two other objects. I have an object that is 60 kilograms and an object that is 40 kilograms. So we looked at the mass of each of these objects so far. Now I want to take a step back and look at the velocity because velocity is very important. It's the other part of my momentum equation. The first object is moving at 10 meters per second. The biggest object, though, is moving the slowest at 1 meters per second. And lastly, object number three, it's moving at 20 meters per second. So maybe you're, you're kind of good with uh, numbers and you can just crunch these numbers in your head. That's cool if you can do that. But I want you to try and guess which object will have the most momentum. Is it the largest object? It's also moving the, fa it's also moving the slowest. So let's, let's crunch some numbers here. Okay, let's start solving this. If you want, go ahead and press pause. Uh, I'm going to solve these anyway, but you can come back and listen to the answers. I always start out each problem by listing the formula P equals mass times velocity. I also like to draw pictures. I'm one of those guys, I do like to draw pictures, and I have an object. I like to represent them as squares, and it's moving eastward. The second object is moving northward. And the last object is moving southward. So here I have my pictures, my formulas, everything set to go. So I'm looking at the first one. Let's solve it, dudes. I like to draw an arrow now and continue out my equation. I'm going to have a, a 60 kilogram object that is traveling at 10 meters per second eastward. And I'm going to end up having a momentum of mass times velocity. 60 times 100 is going to be 600 momentum units, or 600 kilograms times meters per second. So that's the momentum of the first object. Of the heaviest object, it's going to have a momentum of, let's crunch the numbers here, 1,000 kilograms times 1 meter per second, in this case, northward. So 1,000 times 1 is going to equal 1,000 momentum units, or 1,000 kilograms times meter per second, in this case, northward. And the last object, we have a mass of 40 kilograms, and the velocity is 20 meters per second southward. And we're going to have 800 momentum units, 800 kilograms times meters per second. In this case, guys, we're going south. So the question is, which one has the most momentum? In this case, number two does. Number two is the most massive object. It is going slow. It is going one meters per second. I could probably walk at that pace, okay? So it's going one meters per second, but it still has the most momentum because it is actually by far the most massive object. So, dudes, I hope this worked out for you. Hope you thank you. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you on another video. Peace, dudes.